Welcome to podcast number 12. Today's guest is Keely Forsyth. After 20 years as an actress in various roles in Happy Valley, Coronation Street and Heartbeat, she suffered a serious illness and re-emerged as an avant-garde musician. Her album Debris was released in January 2020, was described as arid and beautiful by Pitchfork magazine. It's a melancholic and stirring piece of work showing the influences of Scott Walker and Nico. On today's podcast, we discuss Adam Smith and the Pay What You Feel Cafe, feeding people for nothing, dealing with dark moods and depression, combining the voice and the body to make music, the joys of Christine and the Queens, wet, 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 working with Matt Bourne, the work ethic, and being in full makeup for 12 hours in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I've, I've only met you once, I think, up in Newcastle. That's as far as I can remember. Well, we have met. Well, you can we, should, be... are we st- should we just yeah, yeah, start? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we we did we did meet. Um, I think the first time I met you was with a good mate of mine, Dan Weldon, and he Where? he brought you were doing a gig in a cafe in Leeds. It was one of those. Um, yeah, it's a community cafe, and they use. Food that's been donated oh, by. So the, yeah, uh, we came to. I came with Dan. Yeah, it was Dan the and his it, band. Was, it was the pay as you go cafe. Yeah. The, the junk uh, cafe yeah, yeah. in Armley. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was, was that was run by a guy called Adam Smith, and uh, he was just this guy, a young guy who sort of lived in Leeds, and he got into some bad habits. Went to Australia, became a chef, and uh, and he and he he wanted to do something with his life. He got really kind of stirred up and. And he met this guy and he said, well, this kind of, I don't know, guru, mm-hmm. some guy. And he says, what you need to do is, is sort your own backyard out before you, you start trying to sort other people's, like, you know. So he, yeah. so he went, came back to Leeds and he thought, I'm going to I'm gonna feed people. Yes. And I was just, and, he, mm. that's, and that was it. And he said, I'm just going to feed people. And uh, me and Johnny played in uh, this little uh, uh, Trinity shopping centre in Leeds. Mm-hmm. And he had... This guy was there with his caravan. He had like a caravan on the fifth floor. He had like this kind of like street food thing that was going on. And he was there and he said, this is, I'm Adam Smith and uh, this is the, you just pay what you want. And he used to try and get people like homeless people coming up to sort of eat from the cafe. But there was loads of the security would stop them. So he said, I, you know, it was just kids, rich kids coming up and, t- and taking burgers off me, you know. But he's, he said, I'm setting up this cafe and uh, and I just gave him 20 quid. I thought, fuck it, this yeah, is, yeah. This is, this is uh, genius. Yeah. Because it's love. <clears throat> Absolutely. It's just love yeah. and it's genius. It's, it's, it's not about, well, I'm going to try and sort of educate these people. Yeah. I'm not going to give them a fishing rod and stuff and let them let them uh, start their own kind of uh, farm or something. It, I'm just going to feed people. Yeah, and that and is... And it was just, it tr- went straight past everything else. It was, yeah, it yeah. was so simple and so... Yeah, because that's a, you know, when it's kind of, yeah, that's when the powerful things happen, when the human mind is very, becomes very kind of, when you reduce it, it becomes very, like, yeah, very kind of simple in that kind of, you know, um, yeah, and it does bring it back, like you say, to those things that we are, which is <clears throat> on both duality, love and the opposite of. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it is. It's really important because we do put pressure on ourselves to be, you know, to be things. And even when we want to help, we try and kind of see it as an investment into the future. And that's kind of not what, um, yeah, yeah it, it, true exchange is really. It's just. Yeah, well, the thing yeah, is, we, just, we, we start it's to really sh- special. Yeah, it was, and I, I can remember because, um, I uh, I wasn't feeling very happy in in my head that time. I was like quite sort of low and. Uh, and I just kind of uh, dragged myself through that performance of dance. I said, oh, I could see you were, you were a bit, you were quite spark, you know, in, in the eye. But I really enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. But that I remember that was very inspiring for me because I was kind of on a road to trying to understand, you know, what this thing was that I felt I had no control over this kind of, yeah, this emotion, mental kind of place, which I personally would go in and out of. And, um, yeah, and... So I remember we kind of shared a little bit about it and we went to a pub uh, only for about an hour or so after. I'm sure it was the same day. <clears throat> and yeah, and it was weirdly, that, and I remember it because it kind of, 
really the first time I think we was we were just having a very kind of open and honest conversation and um it started to yeah I felt that there was yeah just like we talked about it a bit but it was like acceptance in <clears throat> yeah in when you are not it, it's not about not feeling right but just kind of you know just trying to equally sit with those feelings and I I think I remember sharing that I do have the same um yeah the same kind of cloud or whatever that kind of comes yeah comes yeah. over me but it was still yeah but we were there out sat talking about it so it didn't feel like it was you know this mysterious thing it kind of it became kind of quite just a human thing of yeah it's, that was that's a that's very straight well so that must have been before you were maybe before you started to yeah record. yeah 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 this was this was before and the reason i think why Dan brought me because we talked about me doing music, but again, it didn't feel, you know, the music was never done as an intention. I'd come from being an actress and that's all about, um, yeah, you have to be quite clear and confident about your approach, but music was different. Music was became, it was something that was a lifestyle thing. So I could never, in order for me to try and use it to min uh, for something, never kind of felt right, but he said, I'll, I'll, he told me that he'd met you and that he felt really inspired by what you were doing and we went to the cafe and he says I think that you will really like just the way that yeah it is it's uh, everything that's done and there's something quite improvisational about it because it has to be because it's what is going on in that moment for yeah. that person yeah and yeah so then that made sense it was like okay so it became more about yeah a response to yeah to your environment which is how the, my yeah. music then started to feel, <clears throat> um, yeah, like it was becoming more of a thing because I didn't want to just get up and, you know, sing. I didn't feel that there was an entertainment in it. I felt that there was just, um, it was kind of necessary. Um, and it was, yeah, so that's why Dan brought me along because he thought that I would enjoy the performance. Yeah. And it was... Even though I know you're saying that you kind of was feeling a certain way, but that was perfect because it was. I've done performances where I've not. I know I have something is off. Yeah. <clears throat> and, but and and initially, you know, you kind of think you don't want to show that you want to. Um. Yeah. You. But then I've started to think. Well, this is. I I can only use what I have, and so. You know, I've done performances where I've had to stand in the corner and face the wall because that's because I can't really suppress those things that are going yeah, on. Yeah. So it becomes about a kind of internal universal love and acceptance, like the yeah. feeding of I was, yourself. I was read yeah. a re I read an, an article by in, in, by Marty Pello from Wet Wet. Oh Next. yeah, I did in the Guardian. And there was just one one line that, that struck me. He was talking about kind of. Uh, stopping drinking and drugs yeah and he just said that he met these two vets these vietnam vets and one of them said what's with the smile you know and uh and he realized that he didn't have to be the kind of the gosh kind of jack the lad sort of like the the wit the, the kind of the yeah, the yeah. wag the wit you know that he, he didn't have to have this kind of front <clears throat> he could just he didn't need to you know people you don't have to try and kind of force your way into somebody's life, you know, by being yeah, appealing yeah. and stuff. You know that people can will come to you. You don't need to seduce them. You know. Yeah. So that's that kind of that hit me, and I, and that because I've sort of had the last few weeks, last maybe six weeks, where I just felt quite sort of flattish and stuff, and I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not the full shilling. I'm not the full um, full tank. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, that that was quite kind of reassuring because I thought, well, well, so what? Because I can still produce some wonderful stuff. I can still. I was drawing Easter cards for my kids and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got kids in London and wherever up in uh, in Dewsbury here and, there. and and I sat and spent a day drawing these pictures and I, I did a picture of a shuttlecock because I couldn't think of anything else. To do. <laughs> And I said to it as an Easter, I was going to draw this cat. We've got like three cats and the cat kept moving. I started the cat, the cat <laughs> and the cat 
And so I, I got the pen out and thought, I'll draw a shuttlecock. That's a really and lovely thing to so draw. So then, then I Googled the shuttlecock, so I couldn't remember the sh You know, I thought, it's got these little kind of like grid sort of Yeah, notes yeah, the how they... Yeah, so I sat and drew a shuttlecock and I, and I said, I was going to draw a cat, but I couldn't draw the cat because it moved. I greased it. <laughs> and, then, and then also drew like some, I think I did a little ship for my mother with like sort of a saying like, here we are, we're coming through the stormy sea, the Gallagher's. Nice. And get through, and it was just like a little ship with a few. Se and she says, "Michael, I got your card. Oh God, it's it, it, the last word. It was. It was great. You had <laughs> lovely words in there." And I think because oh. I felt so bad because I'm thinking, I've got nothing to give them but a fucking ship and a shuttlecock. Uh, but it's still beautiful, even if it's kind of loaded with sadness. Even yeah, if, yeah. Even if it's even if it doesn't kind of even if it isn't chipper. Yeah, and, yeah. And sparkly. There's still a kind of a, a solace and, and yeah. a warmth to it, you know, a love to it. Yeah, I do agree. And I always feel that when I am feeling like that, if I kind of just, you know, and I know sometimes it's easier said than done, you know, don't get me wrong. I've, you know, I've definitely been out in the storms where all you can do is just lay low and curl up for a bit and you just have to, you know, kind of weather it. But, um, but yeah, I've kind of found that when you do let go of that kind of so-called sadness, that it, there's actually a real, there's almost like a, a real kind of, um, um, what, if, if it was a, it, you kind of resonate at, at a higher vibration, but I've kind of felt that there's such a wonderful feeling to it. If you can um, if I've tried to, yeah, just, just let go of trying to resist it, I've gone, gosh, actually the feeling is really, Wonderful. Yeah, it's, well, it's good. It, yeah. It's like if you, on stage, it happens. Like I know when I've kind of messed up on stage, and I had it was going to deliver a line, or I had this, and I've just gone, ah, oh. and I've so I was I messed up, uh, and I just tell them I said I messed up, and and then there's there's almost like a a, 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 a congregational sort of awe, to go, <laughs> oh, no. and you know, just because you're not being flighty and you're not there on the uh, on the, on the high wire and you're not sort of standing yeah, on yeah. one toe you know you're on the floor and you don't look particularly dignified your knickers are showing but but we love you now <laughs> we don't yeah. we're not worried about all the other clever you are or how many sort of degrees of this we, we like the fact that sort of uh, you've messed up like us yeah there you is know. something in that and i think yeah. the more the world is getting kind of connected as well it's like the more um i appreciate when someone is just talking about their own yeah, when it becomes what there is a word to this book, but um, yeah, because everything has, to many extents, everything you want to say to someone has been said. Really, it's just yeah, I'm always drawn to people that, um, yeah, they're just kind of they're giving you an insight into this. Well, yeah, because it's the same words. I mean, you you use words like. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you've got words, you've got hold on, fold in and pray. I was just writing some stuff like, like, and I'll I find a better place, and you go on and you just find a better place. And they're just words, I mean, they're just yeah, yeah. They're not kind of, uh, they're not like skillful, or they're not kind of wilding or something. They're just fucking simple, they're just simple words, and hold yeah. on, fold in and play. You can see that. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I can picture it, I can picture sort of, the <clears throat> words doing that, yeah. uh, and I never meant to hurt you. And it just, I mean, the thing is, I, I was listening to you to last night, I think there was a um, Crossing Border Festival. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there's you you on there, and your hair's really long, and it's black and oh, white, yeah, I've got and it's in a lot of shadow, and there's you and Matt Bourne there. And I'd heard you before with, I was listening to some, some of the album stuff, and there's like kind of electronic -y stuff going on. But then there was just on this this thing. It was just a crossing board. It was just you and Matt, and and it was uh, there was very little going on. It was just playing like sort of a couple of these, and it's on this harmonium. Yeah, thing. yeah. And you were sitting, and, and I couldn't see you because I mean, you had your hair in your face, and you're in black, and there was just very little kind of stimulus, mm -hmm. and and I could hear this beautiful. performance and because it, it was visually stimulating as well as orally stimulating 
Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was just fascinated by it because it was cinematic. You know, it had a, 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 a and and I've seen. I was watching what, what you were doing with your body and other stuff as well, and I'm thinking, oh, that's. She, you know, she's a, she's she. I bet she's good at a disco. I bet she's good at a club. <laughs> I bet she's, you know. I, I can see she's got the beat. She's got the sort of. Did you like my, it when I fell off the chair? What is it? <laughs> I, but I, I just I could see that sort of that because uh, what's the name that's about the French woman, uh, Ellen and the. She's uh, she's got a song called Tilt. Oh, um, Chris. Christine and, and the Queens. Christine and, and the yeah. Queens. Oh God, I'm just seeing her performing because that was so. Ex so, so extraordinary mm. her, her, what she was doing with her body yeah. and what she was wearing and she had these like big trainers and she'd have like these black turn up pants whatever and stuff but and then she was going to this thing tilts and everybody's tilting and thinking oh you know you should be singing you're a singer get when you're singing stop this arty <laughs> fucking nonsense you know but I was I was I was totally captive I think she's a bit greedy you know she wants to be a dancer and she wants to be a singer and she wants to be a performance artist <laughs> we're bringing but, it all back the musical but I, but I think that I, I, it yeah. appeals to me because I think that there's so much you can do not just with your voice but you can sing with your fingers yeah and, totally. your, and your neck and yeah and with stuff around you pick stuff up and you can chuck it in the air and let yeah. it fall and I do <clears throat> I do really like that 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 way of making sound and singing, um, yeah, is really interesting to me. Not just for me, but you know, watching other people. And I, I yeah, and I really love Christine and the Queens. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was. It's funny because when I watched, I think I watched one of Ju Jules Holland things, and um, and kind of wearing, you know, like wearing similar things. And you know, this is probably um, an old voice that reared its head as an actor. You know, you go. Oh, I was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, but the more of us who are doing it, no, the better. Well, I mean, gosh. And that's a great, that's a great sign when you do, when you do it, when you just think, oh, damn. <laughs> it's like, oh, that was good. <laughs> um, so but then it was, yeah, it was, it was just, um, yeah, it was really, and I got kind of obsessed with one of her songs. It, I used to put it on, actually, just to kind of charge myself, you know, mm. and it really did. Yeah, that stuff helps. But the physicality of things, again, I, I think, I don't know whether, because I started to make, to kind of actively make music um, as as an expression of just like, you know, when things, yeah, when things were happening, when one wasn't feeling totally great. So it had to be a physical thing because when you're in that state of mind the only way you can get out of it is by moving as well you know I yeah. found that the, you drag the, yourself out yeah so you move so it becomes not just about the voice it's about the whole thing it ha you, this has to be kind of one entity and that's yeah that's what makes sense and and it was only kind of through the experiences that I kind of had in later life of feeling you know kind of being on other sides of um, life and so yeah it just it's the only the sound and the physicality is absolutely the same thing for me, and it's oh. something that no, it's a complete thing. I, yeah, I was watch because it is. It's a it's not a complete package. That sounds kind of, but it it is. It's there was so much kind of um, information coming out of that little film that I saw of this crossing border thing. So much, uh, it was almost like listening to the radio, except that there was. There was little yeah. flashes of light coming through, flashes of little bits of imagery, tantalising images, and uh, and Matt Bourne, he's 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 uh, he really works. Oh with you. yeah, he really. Honestly, the thing is, he's so know. empathetic. Like me and Johnny, Johnny listens to me, and he and I listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> but but what yeah, but say? Matt Bourne, he really sing, he's really singing with you. Yeah, you know. he's. I, yeah, I feel like it's yeah. The pleasure is always mine being being around him. He is the most generous, talented. Yeah, he re yeah he really is. I hate to kind of put too much responsibility on him because he hates to hear it. But I really meeting meeting Matt Bourne was the start of yeah this whole I mean this whole process what of of nothing. But I mean just you know. Uh, 
yeah, for me. Because he's he's, he's a heavyweight. I mean, he, he's he can go where you yeah. places that, that probably a lot of other musicians. And I've heard some other people, some other guy who plays guitar and somebody else. Um, but I, I really like the drone thing. I yeah. Think, I think that because your your drone is there's, there's like these two things. There's the, the lower sort of whatever the pedally drones and the easy. Yeah. And then there's this thing that you're doing, which is just it's sweeter and uh, in bits but, uh, but they're, they're really it's a wonderful they, they kind of weaving it out of each other him and yeah, you yeah yeah they do sit you know. really well together and it is he is the mo he is such um a skillful player and when we did the tours together i mean literally most of our songs together you know he's just like Ooh, yeah, yeah. so for some you know with and he's never kind of gone you know what can you just get someone else to do it because i don't find he he's just committed he loves kind of yeah. oh he, you know he's, he tells me that he does yeah he just kind of loves being loves being part of it the pro and the process and he's absolutely committed to those two notes and finds just his own and he's he's a quite a performance yeah because I, I watched him on yeah i watched him on the uh, 2001 I, 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 and i was just looking at the performance of the Cafe Otto, Otto yeah. possibly, but it was a Perrier oh, no, no. Award. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and I just had not seen it, so I just put it on. It's really grainy. And you see it there, and, he's, and he starts off with this really sort of ding -ly ding -ly ding at the high end of the piano. And then he's goes into this strange, I'm thinking, bloody hell, that's fast. You know, and he's, yeah. he's all over the shop, you know. And then he goes into these lovely kind of like, um, some kind of Hollywood sort of, Tune, it's kind of a show tune, yeah, but very, or like Smile or something, possibly, you know, like Charlie oh, Chaplin. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, he was great because yeah. and he's he wants to redo that. And, uh, I'm thinking, God, he's a he was just and then he was hitting a bell at like a little kind of hotel bell, he was going bang. How you know, was it? I've <laughs> not seen that, yeah, so it's just a bit of kind of a uh, bit preposterous, you know. Let's love, and then there was a little bit of uh, I think they, they played some uh, uh. Could have been from over the rainbow somewhere. Uh, some little bit of dialogue that was really, really mm. come true or something. Something about dreams coming true or something. Uh, but it was, it was so. Um, he was so empowered. He yeah, was so yeah. in control on that piano. Yeah. So to, to watch him there, just hitting two notes there, and just subsuming himself behind. Well, not behind, because he because. It, the sound is all important to the pair of you. Mm -hmm. You can see it's not about who's going to kind of, you know, who's in the lead. It's like yeah, yeah. you're making this this ball of, of you know, fury and, and, and warmth and, and love, you know, together. Oh, it does know. feel like that. Yeah, I do. I, I, and I think it's funny how it's kind of worked out because, again, before I was making music with anyone, the reason why it felt impossible was because I was... You know, I didn't. Yeah, because it does. You, you if you're gonna share something, I, I don't just like that. What happens on stage? I like to have a real respect and love for someone. It's a, you know, you meet someone with the same energy. It's kind of it's a good energy that. Yeah. Not that a good energy always translates as what we perceive good to be, but it's an, yeah, it's an energy. It's an energy thing. So assuming that you're gonna. You, you know, like playing it. I, I think I had, I'd, for years, friends would say to me, well, if you want to do it, just do it. Put an advert in and get a band together. And then I would come across as, you know, one of those people that talk about stuff but never do it. And it wasn't that. I knew, I felt that it was definitely on my path, but I just had to wait. It was a different kind of waiting. Yeah. And, yeah, and then meeting Matt. And it was like, yeah, it was like the... There it was. So there was a period oh, between yeah. you meeting Matt and you sort of doing telly and then you you making some music, was it? Yeah, well, I, I was oh, you, on you my were making own music. Early, making music for, uh, yeah, yeah, for, for um, probably for about 10 years before I met Matt. But I was doing, I mean, I've still got bits of it, but, you know, just kind of just collecting sounds and doing spoken word over it, just kind of desperate to find, it was more of a kind of, who am I, you know, what is this kind of um, impulse to making music? 
and I I always felt more comfortable singing than talking. There was all, you, when I had you know being an act, being an actress as well, though, or even just speaking to people socially. <clears throat> yeah, I felt more comfortable singing, prolonging. It didn't seem as intense. Words can be quite staccato, yeah, mu music, you know. Yeah, music uh, uh, kind of uh, slips in easier than than words. Yeah, because yeah. because prior yeah. to prior to um, doing joining my band, Johnny, you know, with, with Johnny and, and the I did stand up. I did like spoken word. Oh yeah. And I'd be okay. up on stage, sort of talking. I'd be going pocket of straws. <laughs> juggling barges well, yeah. and it was it's kind of people going oh man that's a bit shock you know but it, it was it was the, the level was quite intense yeah and then when I got this music where I got John Ding 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 oh, people oh it's George Formby juggling barges well yeah <laughs> there you go you know and it's the music sort of <laughs> is adds like a salve or something yeah, where it's kind so of sugar true. smooth and and you can get you can get sort of a uh, your point across yeah a lot more subversively almost than, than if you're there saying you know i'm dark and dangerous i am the fool i am the mighty fool <laughs> you know if you got me think danger i am dark and dangerous i am the mighty fool oh, yeah. oh no you're not oh yes i am <laughs> so you know it's it's you know music yeah. music is a uh, music came first yeah i was just I thinking think. that yeah yeah because all my family are, uh, I just know my aunties. I can just know I'm watching my 80 year old aunties and 70 year old, and they sit there and, and all they think about is music. So, oh God, play as a tune. Uh, just ask my dad to because my dad was a musician and he played oh uh, and he played the flute and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'd go around, they'd come and visit, and then they'd ask dad to, to play the, uh, his flute and do some music. And then they'd all sit there with their hands on the laps and, go, oh. Oh, and they'd be drifting off in a reverie. Mm -hmm. So, and they were just, oh, I love music. I mm. love it. You know, please, God, let, you know, let me hear this for the rest of you. Know. Yeah, yeah. There's just true. a sense of something sacred and something quite sort of uh, all consuming about. Yeah, about and it's it, not you know. about like, I don't know. And, and it's especially the older I'm getting, kind of, the more I'm really resenting just chat. You know, language is something that is so sacred that, but we've kind of you overused it now, as in, you know, the kind of spoken word and, you know, we talk about. You know, and and I am I am into kind of you know normal chit chat, but it just I've, yeah, I just kind of feel tired of it. And actually, if I yeah, to fill to to fill that space, that it is definitely because you go into a different place of yourself as well. Um, you know, yeah, talking is kind of quite here, but hmm, you know, there's a resonant, and it's and I find that really yeah. But when there's other people sort of involved who are like. Uh, garnishing it or kind of the noise yeah. like musicians they you become almost like less tr threatened and less anxious because there's somebody else sharing your thoughts yeah yeah it's, and and these yeah. people these people aren't frightened or they're not kind of uh, disturbed by what you're saying they're interpreting it you know that through your yeah, words yeah that's true that is and true that, and that, that feels quite i think that feels really kind of uh, reassuring and and, uh, and it means you can just carry on I'm, I'm going to carry on doing this because yeah yeah because it's a really lovely feeling and there's a mood that's happened here yeah and and people say oh god that was a really lovely mood i've walked away from that and i feel calmer yeah yeah <laughs> from listening to yeah. you know. yeah i i do i can i completely um understand and agree and that's why you know, I mean, you have the same, you know, in making music with people who you love dearly and who you, as people. And yeah. I think that's, yeah, because I'm not interested in making for the sake of it. It's, it has to become secondary out of the, yeah, ev yeah, it has to, uh, it has, it's almost a secondary thing to what, what you feel, you know, in the room with the people that you're with and, yeah, the music is a celebration of that, um, you know, rather than, gosh, to assume that, you know, you just kind of think, right, I'm, I'm just going to <clears throat> make music with random people. Yeah, is... There's, there's, mu there's musicians yeah. and musicians, I think. And, uh, yeah, and maybe that, because I'm, 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 I mean, I don't, 
I don't play an instrument, so I have to always work in this way of being intuitive. I have to because I have. Johnny was skill. Johnny was saying in the car. He said, you know, we both have come from different sort of uh, backgrounds, not not conventional music mu musical background. You know, you you came from from television. You came from performing, and and I came from portraits and yeah. and stand up and then yeah. and then got involved with amps and PA systems and that was uh, so I didn't really have any sort of history uh, of, of the yeah. musical sort of uh, whatever matrix you know the the, yeah. the language the the clubs the hierarchy and stuff I, I just I came yeah. as an artist I just I used to turn up at the wardrobe in Leeds and get up on stage with uh, Matt Ball probably and a few other people there and I used to rip the piss out of them because I just thought, you know, they think they're so good, think they're so clever these days because <laughs> they know all these diminished fifths and they've got this thing and they've been listening to Thelonious Monk and stuff, whatever. And, and I get up and say, let's do a song about, you know, let's do, come on, let's start, let's do Bananas. <laughs> bananas, bananas, it's a musical. Bananas. It goes, bananas, 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 wait. <laughs> and we go, you know, and we go, oh, it's him again. Every week, turn up Oh, the, I know, yeah. So, uh, because... No, I completely get it. Uh, so it's just, I mean, yeah. So when you first started as a kid, you, you, you know, you're doing singing now and, and you're doing performing, you know, acting. So what started first of all then as a kid? Was it yeah, the, the, in the same as you really, the, the music, the singing started first. And, <clears throat> and I was reading something only recently that actually, you know, some, although I was a kid, I was absolutely sure of what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a singer. And I wanted to be part of the theatre. Um, and I did that lots as a kid. And then, yeah, this thing that I read last night about you kind of get to your place through really a, um, the process of elimination. You do things and you realise that's not you. And I think with me, um, I kind of, I forgot that. And I got into acting and it didn't feel right. But I just, I just, you know, kind of kept at it and hoping it would feel right. <laughs> So did Instead you do of like, it would have been a process of elimination. It would have been okay, you know. So were you acting really at, like were you like a child actor? Were you, were yeah, you... I got on my first acting job at fifteen, and and I, I understand looking back why I continued with it just because I got an agent and started and work. And work was coming your way. Yeah, so and I kept thinking it didn't something wasn't right, you know. I, I then I'd stop singing and. But I could try and reframe it while I love the theatre and it's kind of connected, so maybe it would be... But I did some theatre as an actor. Again, the spoken thing was very sur odd for me, the surreal thing, because I felt that... Yeah, I felt that what I... How I communicated was with Musically. music and voice. So, but, you know, I just kept at it, hoping it would feel better. Mm. And if there was a... Trophy for resilience. <laughs> then yeah, it's 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 really oh, it's really odd because sometimes some of us are like cowards. I think like I I initially when I was doing my portraits, I, I met this woman and uh, we uh, got married. Oh, we're going to get married, and she says, you know, what do you want to do? Because I was working on the buildings, shoveling concrete and stuff. Yeah. And she says, what do you want to do? And I said, I, I want to, I want to be an RE teacher. And she went, well, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> off you go. So. so <laughs> So, and I felt really embarrassed because I just thought, God, yeah, I'd like to be an RE teacher. <laughs> and I, I went off and I did studies and uh, I did like a degree and stuff. And I, and I ended up at Trinity and All Saints at Leeds and blang, blang, three or four. I was writing essays. I, I'd come from the buildings and awful agency work, crap jobs, you know, mindless, yeah, yeah. crap pay, just hand to mouth, biting my nails every day. And then, and then I'm sitting down writing essays on monasticism and Sufism and, and feminist theology and uh, I thought, my god this is amazing you know but then uh, and I would really enjoyed the classroom as well because I'd get in the classroom and I'd just go for it I mean but it was not a performance it wasn't really a lesson there wasn't any aims and objectives <laughs> you know because the teacher says what was the point of that lesson that you just did there Michael I said well we were just talking about uh, you know we were talking about the synoptic god whatever about yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah but then it went why did you uh, 
well, you put the hat on then and start sort of spinning it round on your head. <laughs> I said, that, well, because... <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, I, I so you were you were taking the lessons. Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was teaching. So I was going to. I was I was in the classroom doing sort of. Uh, uh, I hadn't finished my my. Yeah. I was still studying and I was doing teaching practice. So I did that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it got to my final teaching practice and I, and I failed the teaching practice. In the meantime, I was working at night doing portraits on paper bags. Mm -hmm. And my wife wasn't particularly happy with the idea of me being out wandering around the streets drawing in brown paper bags you know she she was happy with me being possibly the head of the uh, theology department yeah the sort of uh, head of whatever and I and I realized and then I, anyway I failed the teaching practice and and it was like thank god I failed because uh, I can be I can go out and draw in paper bags mm -hmm. I can do that so we could do it oh it's a package is it yeah let me have a look out the window. Oh, it looks good. I'll get it later. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, just saying that I, I bottled it. I mean, and I've, I'm a bottler. I'm a great bottler. I need to sort of have um, something to explode and, 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 yeah. and get picked up. So, so the thing is, I'm thinking, great, I can carry on. I've got my get out clause to carry on being an artist. And I've just, and, and I've, I did have the conversation. I'm not going back to do, to do, a, Reset this teaching uh, yeah. exam. I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry on doing these portraits on paper yeah. bags, and that kind of, that was, uh, yeah, that was. Uh, I carried on. Yeah. And uh, I realised I had to do that. Yeah. And, and I went on to. Uh, but, yeah. Sometimes, um, life looks after you because you're not strong enough to look after yeah, yourself yeah i think yeah i <clears throat> yeah i do believe that um yeah i really do so anyway you, um tell us about happy valley what was working in happy valley like i know it's funny that the I, I did such a small part on happy valley it's kind of you know oh well i just did a couple of episodes of it but um did you have a lot? Did you have a lot of dialogue to learn? Well, I mean, not necessarily in that. In the other jobs, um, yeah, it was always kind of the same. Um, yeah, I never, and I and I'm not kind of mo moaning about it, but I never kind of felt. Yeah, I always felt kind of quite passive going into those things. So, I, at the beginning of my career as an actor, I would really engage and commit to it I mean I always did you know I went to Oldham Theatre Workshop as a kid and that kind of instilled a, a very kind of high state of discipline where I took it seriously you know I was a kid that <clears throat> used to go to the theatre workshops and everyone else kind of saw it as a bit of a laugh and I absolutely didn't the joy came out of the work ethic and I really loved that so I even though I wasn't enjoying being an actor I was enjoying the purpose of work. It felt a noble profession. Yeah, it kind of did. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah, it did. And I am a. Th I definitely need that because I can just wander. But you know, I, I, I do need that kind of structure. But that structure to be. But the structure kind of allows me to kind of be quite quite chaotic within it. But I. But I do. <clears throat> yeah. I yeah I do enjoy that kind of work ethic. Even with, like you know like when stuff comes in as a. As a musician, like with the Crossing Borders thing, they said I could just sit in my front room and play, but it was like, or, you know, I could hire a room, I could come up with a concept, and I could, you know, and it's always an opportunity to, to put more work in. To tax yourself. Yeah, to do yeah. that, and that's... Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the thing had been... So at the beginning of my acting career, I was, yeah, you know, kind of really engaged with it, but kind of then by the end, I was learning lines... <clears throat> in the car going to work you know just yeah. kind of really letting it take the minimum amount of time in my life um, was this because you were also because you were a mum as well yeah maybe I think the the massive shift came when I had yeah when I had my girls um how old, how old are they they are 12 and 8 um 
Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that was. Um, and I think it was actually going back to work as an actor because I didn't work for a few years after having them. Um, partly because the work just didn't come in and I was kind of scared of telling my agent that I was pregnant. Um, and I mean now I would deal with it in a very different way but I'd, I'd kind of been instilled in, with this way of having to please, you know, I think not all actors but definitely it fed into an insecurity in me that I just had to, as an actor, I had to be there, I had to please, I had to Grab your opportunity. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I was I was always facilitating someone else's work, and that for someone now I've learned that actually that's not the right place for me to be in. For so therefore it did feed into my insecurities of just being very passive, and um, very in, yeah very insecure. So when I was told that you know I can't work because I'm now you know pregnant or I just accepted it and I just. So yeah, I didn't work for a few years and then going back into it just kind of felt like, yeah, I was going backwards and that's, and then I started to just get less work. I started to enjoy it less to kind of, you know, to go and pretend to kind of take, you know, driving to work, taking your clothes off to put someone else's on. Actually, I started to think, well, hang on me. I'm more, I find myself more interesting than these people that. I'm being forced to and play. And you were kind of, and, were, and the music was like sort of tr trickling into yeah, the so life. Yeah, so the music was, was happening. You were waiting for some kind of like bell to ring or something. Yeah, all that was going on, and I kind of didn't really believe it would. Um, anything would happen. It felt like, you know, all throughout my life, I'd I'd been able to. So as a kid, I wanted to move to London, and I, you know, I could set goals and somehow try and achieve them. But with the music, it. I had no idea how that could ever happen. Um, and and I was tired, really. I was tired of trying to make something of my life. Yeah. Because what is there, you know? I was just really tired of that. So, yeah, so I just stopped. And yeah, I suppose if you're, well, you may be single as well. And yeah. other kids, and, and it does. I mean, I, I remember starting when doing my portraits and I had two small kids as well and I there's a certain amount of energy you have yeah and you lose like your kind of fashion sense and you <laughs> just remember <laughs> going out in awful just wearing yeah, awful, true, awful trousers for about five years six <laughs> years just being this kind of blob that goes in the park <laughs> With, you know, and yes, and it picks the kids up. Oh. So, you know, I'm basically there. I'm like a big sponge just carrying these children, and I put them down, and then we get them in the car, and it was just feeding them and wiping the bums, telling them stories, and just you become subsumed. Don't yeah, you? yeah. And so any idea of like being the ego, like, well, no, but I'm an artist. Good yes, what am I, you know? What's what going on here? You know? It's like, well, sorry, you, you, you've got your priority now is like your kids. So it was quite tricky to sort of juggle that. Yeah. But, and it's about just energy. You just, you just don't have enough. Yeah. And then you kind of try and grab a little bit. You have a window of energy. Oh, God, I'll, I'll draw yeah. a picture. Or, and I could, right, I've got three o'clock, four o'clock. What can I do? Oh, yeah. I'll do that. I'll pick up that hammer and start battering yeah. that bit of stone. And, and you, it's not a question of, of kind of scratching your chin and kind of mulling, well, what? What am I trying to say today? And you think, I'm, you know, I'm going to make a, a banana. You know, yeah. I'm going to make a sonic <laughs> banana. It's a screaming sonic. You know, I'm going to plug it in. Just so it's very much about just uh, just grabbing the preciousness of life because you just realise I've got an hour. Yeah, yeah. Just, let's yeah. go. I'm going to play like mad for an hour. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, that has helped now with with how I do work because I do do things very um yeah I do things very quickly even with this record that has been made <clears throat> you know and is yeah it, I do is it, quick. it is it uh, is it you and Matt again or is it what's... um there's me Matt and there's a musician Ross Downs he's he's brought he was on the um the photograph EP um he kind of his work is digital so because I wanted to yeah, the artist who I really love has kind of just kept going with stuff, you know, I mean, obviously Scott Walker, but all his, you know, like, yeah, it makes sense, all those sounds that are on 
his records. Mm. Um, so it's yeah, so it's kind of like a three-way thing now. Um, so Matt Bourne still does play the the real, you know, he brings that kind of realness to the world with his instruments. Mm. And Ross would, yeah, do the electronic side of things. Um, so how you how did you do it then over lockdown? Were you doing this yeah. over lockdown? Were you like in a room together, or were you like ringing up each other and zooming? Yeah, just each other? that was how the first record was made, just through I'd send born stuff and then he'd send it back and then I just redo my vocals over the whole thing and then we'd kind of just have a back and forth like that so never in the same I'm not we did a we have done some tracks in the same room but I'm not so I might be different at, at, at it now but I'm not so good at that actually because I really love performing because I know there's something real about it. it is it is happening in real time and I and and I I really love that but the the yeah the thing of like performing together to record something I say as an actor I never liked rehearsals because I know I would hold back I'd hold something back all the time and I can't kind of you know and I've tried to yeah to just think well come on you need to do this you need to kind of grow up get over yourself and kind of just but so no, I, I like to be on my own or yeah, yeah. I just I just thought of something else there was a woman called Kiki D who was a singer oh, yeah. from Bradford and uh, she uh, she was always an amazing performer but she she was never happy with what she did in the studio. She could never capture yeah. her uh, and she was signed to like Motown or something when she was about 19 or 19. You know, she was, they thought she had an amazing voice and you know, she was a great soul singer uh, uh, but she just, she... Uh, she, she hated the studio. She loved being, she did it out there when yeah, there's people yeah. there to sort of sing to a sort of like a whatever. Yeah, it is, it's a different process. And yeah. I think we're a lot, I think sometimes as a, as a creative, as an artist, whatever, you kind of, it's almost like people that, you, you know, you're not allowed to like one motion and, you know, people, like as an actor, that would be the first question. Do you, you know, do you like, which one do you like best? And you would feel, I would feel bad saying that, you know, I, well, I don't really like doing, but because, but, but yeah, we are still allowed to have, it's like with any, you know, with, with, with any craftsman, they might prefer building this to building that, you know, and mm. it's, and it is, you yeah, know, we are allowed to say, actually, I don't like, it doesn't mean I'm not going to do it, but I don't like that. Yeah. And I like yeah. this and I yeah. prefer, yeah, yeah. And I definitely have, yeah, I don't like being in a room with people. Um, whilst we're making the the work, I like to be on my own <clears throat> because being on my own is the closest that I come to performing. That's the feeling that I get when I'm just on my own. I don't mind being in. I wouldn't go to a studio. I have a studio in in my house upstairs. Oh, and that's where you do. Your, that's where you sing. <laughs> yeah. So that's I just do right. it at home. So you just go. So that's you. You can let go, and yeah. Even if there's no no audience you can you, you can still find the, the the stuff yeah i can yeah although it's the it's such an interesting thing you know but when you press record it's like a, a mate of mine did a, did a dissertation on this whole bit of you know kind of being in and out of being like recorded what is that thing that happens to us because i do i'll i'll do something and i'll practice and then i'll press record and then suddenly i know that it's like this like this, this head that rears itself. It's a bit like, oh, come on now, you know. You're <laughs> and I just think, and I try and squash it down, and trick myself into just pressing record accidentally. But there really is something. Yeah. This. This monitor. Which you can utilize. This pre in, this prefect who's kind of. Yeah, saying, it's this sure gaze this the, that you Make can, sure this is perfect. Oh right. my god, it's so <laughs> boring, and I just think, yeah. But it's it's interesting, you know. It's kind of like. All this stuff is going. All these conversations are going on in my head as I'm trying to record. Uh, yeah. That's it. it well, I think it's, it's a case of uh, I don't know living with a this dysfunctional family. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, I was. I've just written some stuff down. I've got. I've got Karen Dalton, Ivor Cutler, Jackie Trent. Oh. Well, I don't know Jackie Trent. Jackie Trent is from. Uh, she was going. She was Tony. Tony Hatch and Jackie Trent like two British kind of songwriters oh. in like the early 60s and Jackie Trent was a, was a, a kind of a muscly kind of uh, 
nice and woman and as a singer. She she sang on the Val Dunican show and all this sort okay. of uh, she was on general telly, you know, she was she'd she get on Des O'Connor's show and she'd be on the Palladium and she was Jackie Trent, she was British, <laughs> but she had a she's quite a strong, forceful woman and she had a quite a uh, uh, bit Cleolaney, but uh not commercial. Yeah. But but she had this very interesting voice and I was listening to some of it, you know, I was just hearing this, playing your stuff last oh, night and just <clears throat> listening to sort of, things were going off in my head and, and uh, I got Shirley Bassey, I got a, a bit of... Oh, I'll uh, take a bit of Shirley. Yeah, so, <laughs> but, uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, Karen Dalton as well. Yeah, I love Karen Yeah, and, and her tone is very smoky and... and it's it's razor sharp. There's something really piercing yeah, yeah. about her her yeah, delivery. Yeah, so wonderful. Yeah, and, and and it's 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 like an it's like an oboe or something. So there's something me yeah. the voice is more. Mm. It's it's yeah. it has this this range, this wonderful sort of bigness and purity, uh, but also kind of it's like a quantro or something. It just has a richness to it. You know, yeah. And um, so I was, I was getting some of that, you know. And I'm, I'm not sort of saying oh, you're an amalgam, but oh, just okay. little. And and, yeah. and also there was like I'm thinking oh there's a bit of Scottishness there as well. I, I, sometimes in your delivery, something in, in, in some of your um, intonation is there's this oh, brrr, sort of. Um, yeah, I like doing that. Brrr. I was I did a song last night and I was breathe, you know, and I was saying stuff like that, and I don't know why. It's <laughs> Or I have started to kind of sing in a bit of a, you know, a bit of a kind of accent, like I'm from some other place. Yeah. But, you know, we gotta that, do, we gotta do things to entertain ourselves. Yeah, and and also, <laughs> yeah, like and, and also, I suppose you you're saying it's you're talking about uh, this. It's not you almost. It's this character that you call it she yeah. or something. So presumably, you want to keep yourself entertained. And you want to play, and wasn't yeah. it, it, there has to be some surprise there. You have to surprise yourself and say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna cough now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just, it's, because it's your stuff. You can do with it what you like, and it, and, it, and oh. the thing is, you're not going to deliver it the same way, are you? As you, as you don't, you know, you you you're of the same school. You love the impro. You love yeah, yeah. You, and really you and Barney the same. Yeah. Uh, because why would you deliver this, you know, this plate of food that's gone cold now? Because you had yeah, it last yeah. night, it was great last night, but don't serve that same plate up again tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice Don't eat it again, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, that's to have Yeah. It. it is, and it's kind of, it, it feels, yeah, it feels really good to have this peripheral view of this, yeah, of what is going on um because it's yeah and uh, and and you know we only kind of know these things from contrast and i say it from being in a place many many years where yeah where i just felt that there was something yeah that there was a better you know there was a becoming that i wanted to do and usually it's becoming in a reduced way but to kind of feel that 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 kind of hard work has been done as in you know the hard work of um, going going through something, feeling like poo for a long time. That was the kind of hard work, you know, kind of like on, you're on the front line, and then you just get to breathe a bit, and you go, ah, oh, yeah, it was, um, it's a, yeah, it is a good place to be. Cause, Cause, yeah, yeah, because you were like, I think you were, you had a, some health issues, whatever you were like, you you, you became dumb, you were, you, you couldn't speak, and so and. Uh, well, and and you came out the other end, and this happened. This this music sort of. Thing. Yeah, I mean it's. Because you, think... you, 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 your voice, your, your mouth rebelled. Stop! We didn't want to do dialogue. We wanted to do music. Yeah, and that was the only thing that I, you know. Yeah, that it felt I could make sounds rather than words. But um, but yeah, that was from I think it was that from that was from the Guardian article, and they, and if, you know we live in a world of stories, and that isn't that seems like an interesting story that you know you get, 
<clears throat> you you lose your you well you lose any anything that is anything that the ego is related to you kind of it's almost like the death of the ego but so I was very conscious even though not being able to talk but it kind of seems like a very romantic notion of you know and then you know you come out and you make this music but of course yeah life isn't that it's really scary and you kind of shout and then you know so you you were so how did you de- how did you deal with being a mum and and just yeah you know, we presume were you were you in uh, were you in a hospital or were you or were you yeah no, I mean I <clears throat> I was with my yeah my gran looked at, I was brought up by my gran and my gran looked after me um so yeah I just took my I just took myself out of things for a bit um and and your children were like looked after yeah the, yeah the children are, uh, they have an an incredible dad who is oh Mac yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah because you know Mac because Mac's yeah. very good mates with Dan yeah 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 of course yeah they have and he is wonderful he's a wonderful dad and a, a wonderful human um yeah so yeah but I mean it was you know the kind of whole process was only a few weeks but it was it's you know the, it's kind of yeah, there's nothing kind of special to my story. It does, I, and and it's, yeah, especially I see it in kind of females, especially that having to you go through these things, and especially people that 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 do want to spend their time on earth actually expressing stuff. That's how they find out about who they are and the life around them. And when you've not done that for a long time because you've been caring for other people, which is an incredible expression as well, but. Um, yeah, you just kind of, I just did hit a wall, but I knew the wall was coming and I just, yeah, I just waited for it to hit, mm. you know, the good old fashioned way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. It's the coming. The wall's coming. You it's know, coming. It's moving about seven miles an hour. You know, I mean, I could get out of the way. It's only yeah, coming. I could, I could it's, get it's out of the way. It's not coming at 60 miles an hour, it's coming at seven. And I could have got out of the way. Look out, the wall's coming. You know? Oh, come on, this might be fun. <laughs> We might as well see whether it's yeah. Oh. So, so yeah, I liked I, I I like to go through things, feel stuff. So what? Tell us about Guardians of the Galaxy. What was that like? What did you do with that? Um, well, it was incredible. Because my son, I mean. my son, my son is like, he says, oh, you know, ask ask her about Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, that's a was it Marvel thing, that it? Yeah. Yeah, I was very grateful to get that job because I get that was the. F- I'd not worked for a few years and that job was like the first job that I had which kind of then started things off again for me as an actor and so it was after I'd had my second yeah my second child um so I was really happy to be working I knew nothing of Marvel and when you have come off the back of you know giving birth doing all that and then you have security outside because you know you're reading the script they don't want you to share it because it's very very important the weight and you have to give it back to them. You know, I was a bit like, guys, I am interested in whether this is important. And I, I know, but you know, it, but you know, when those two worlds just come together, yeah. and and yeah. Well, you've so kind of, you're old enough. You're old enough to just, hold your breath. So you know, we need it back. Just yeah, <clears throat> it's Marvel. I'd never heard of Marvel, um, but of course, you know, I respect all. Yeah, all things that are being made. Um, but I was really, I was really happy to do that job. The people on it were incredibly amazing, generous, lovely. Yeah, it was a wonderful job to do. I had a my my costume though was about my my makeup call was probably about a twelve hour makeup call I had. It was right. intense because I was covered really from like the torso everywhere. I had my nostrils free. I wore contact lenses even, and just a little slip in my mouth. God. And everything else was prosthetics. God. And did you, <laughs> were you make, did you make a noise? Were you, were you, were you, were you doing a Well, I had dialogue? to do my, um, um, I had to do American accent dialogue. And again, you know, the absurdity of it, because I just had kids and I was coming, you know, the absurdity of me kind of sat in an alien thing after 12 hours, just thinking, you know, being... You know, ushered over all in black because there were helicopters that were trying to take pictures, and it, and and again, of course, it is important, but it was a big part of me. You know, maybe the northern part that was going. 
give up my donkey. <laughs> so, so how did, oh, how, did, how did you pass the time with this? I mean, you got twelve hours sitting there. But presumably they were talking to you. They, they like. Uh, yeah, Make I actually people. used to fall asleep sometimes, but I, I'm very, I've had a lot of practice in twiddling my thumbs. I'm very good at being left to do nothing. Um, yeah, I'm always very happy sitting there with my own thoughts, driving myself into the ground. And you can sit at home and uh, uh, you, you, you like your own company then? You, yeah, I not, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't really get agitated with those things. But again, a lot of being an actor is actually sitting as... Johnny yeah, well, you're sitting around. Oh, yeah, I do, I do. I mean, I've done Emmerdale or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Actually. So I mean, it's I'm, just. And it's. I mean, I'm sitting in the back. I'm. I'm. Well, I'm crossing the street with an envelope, or I'm. I'm in the bar with a pint, and, and uh, meanwhile, I'm thinking of plans to change the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's. It is when I'm working as an actor. That's kind of my my rest time. That's when I can just relax. Mm -hmm. Know that things are. You know, th things are sorted. Your life is, you know, your life is given to you in a schedule, everything you eat. So everything's taken care of. So that is my time to kind of go, right, what am I doing? What's going on? Yeah. So I use it for that yeah. to make my evening plans. Yeah, well, I, I did lots of album drawing sleeves and stuff at, at the, in the studio at Kirkstall. I'd just sit down and yeah. be writing songs, you know, uh, or, um, or just cutting... Uh, Cutting albums, bring some scissors and some A4 size bits of paper, and they'd have the album design. I'd be cutting album sleeves, 50, 60 album sleeves in an hour, and then I think I've got, I could do a few more. Or I'd be drawing, yeah. they'd write my name on a clothes peg. So I used to give clothes pegs out as business. Oh, cards. nice, yeah. Just have the name and then the number on the back. And so I'd, I'd have a bag of clothes pegs I'd take back home. With mm, yeah. And, uh, like a little uh, piece worker. <laughs> 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 uh, I, try, I, remember, I remember trying to draw people while I was there, and, but it was, you really don't have a window to do that. You know, you think, oh, I've got, I'll, I'll have all day, I'll be sitting there doing nothing, but this person gets called. They say, oh, Janice, can you go and, uh, uh, yeah, we, need, yeah. we need you now, Janice. And you might have said, and it, there's not a sort of, uh, there's this false sense that uh, yeah, you are kind of nothing of happening, called, but actually, but yeah. you're actually on the balls of your bum, you know. Yeah, and yeah. You're going to be called. Yeah, that's true. Tell us, tell us about the album. You know, just yeah, what's so it called? Have, you, have you a title well, for no it? There's no kind of there's like there's a working title, but I think that will change. Um, it will be out on Leaf label again, um, and it will be, it won't be until September October. Right. Um. Yeah. And so this is a three-way collaboration with me, Ross Downs, and Matthew Bourne. Uh, yeah, and it's very different from the first, or it sounds very different, but it's not because it's still. And you, you, you're the words. You're, the, you're, you're the person. You, you. Yeah. You're in charge of the words, and the other lads, Ross and, and Matt, are doing the. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Debris was really a translation of the songs that I'd made over the years, but this is a new project. So as far as the writing of the music it's done equally it's not these you know these songs didn't exist before ross and matt were on board where right. yeah. debris stuff did so it's yeah it's more of a collaboration but yeah i am also the words and and um what's the other one the sound but um but also matt boyle who is part of boyle and shaw they they contributed to words on the first album and also, they have on the second album as well. Not that they know it, but I just kind of dig into old stuff when I don't have any ideas of my own. <laughs> yeah. So do you ever play with like um, other, like Matt does, like he, he lobs in a, a bit of show tunes every now and again, or a bit of Lionel Richie, or kind of, or do you ever um, customize an old? <laughs> Not really. Show I mean, when, when I have, because I do, maybe that's why, we haven't really talked about the show tunes, me and Matt Bourne, but I, I love all that. Um, and when I've been doing live performances, I have, um, I love Les Mis, and I have kind of, in between, um, it, it's, it's, you know, maybe trying to fulfil my desire to be in those shows, which hasn't, hasn't happened up to, up to yet, obviously. Um, you know, there, there have been times I've kind of done, stopped a song and then gone, Cosette, it's time, so cold. You know, that kind of rendition of 
Blame is, mm. cause it's past your bedtime. And that's a bit like, oh, this is bloody good. I'll turn the day away and see the dream. You know, so, but that's the stuff that's always kind of at the forefront of my head. So when there's a, it just clicks and in. And you've, you've never, you've never had stood in front of there like a, an, an orchestra or a band and done. No, uh, I'd love to do. That's no business <laughs> like show. Oh. Well, this is, when I had a meeting with the label, I think kind of to their horror, when they said, so what are you trying to do with it? You know, they was trying to see how somehow it would marry with the first album. But I just said, it is, it's. You know, uh, this is just the path. I'm trying to get myself to Broadway. This is all that this is, you know. So the first one was very, yeah. this is a bit more. Uh-huh. As soon as and then, yeah, and then, and then, here we <laughs> come. <laughs> I can get myself in, in showboat. Yeah. No, but I, yeah, I, but I do. But I love that opera telling stories through sound. Thanks very much, Keely, for joining us today. Keely's finishing up a new album which comes out in a few months. Details can be found on her website, www.keelyforsyth.com, on Twitter at Keely Forsyth, and on Facebook, Keely Forsyth. You can listen to this again and download the podcast on iTunes, Mick Artistic's Ego Podcast. Further links can be found on our website, www.mickartistic.com. Cheers to all of you people who keep tuning in, and if you like what you hear, Give us a review on iTunes and tell your mates about it. Off you go then. Bye.